I do it my hands. <laughs> hey, what's up everyone? <laughs> What is up, watch fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris. My name is Michael Christie. This video is brought to you by headphones.com. They got the domain. That's my pitch for them always. They got the domain. They got the domain. More on them later. Yes. Today we're back at Boulevard headquarters. <laughs> Today we're talking about uh, Pharrell Williams' trailblazing watch collection. Believe it or not. Which is an article by Hodinkee. It's uh, all Boulevards. You <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, you know what I learned? We, I need to, I'm going to need to order a couple of chairs for the office with uh, armrests. And something I can put my back, you know, like, I like sitting like this. This yeah, is like my real, cool. this yeah. is how I, you know what I mean? I usually sit like this. This is Actually, how I, I have sit. a standing desk. I, I want to like really judge what you're saying. You know what I mean? Oh. Everyone's going to say, my he's even is... worth now. I even, I hate him even more with the chair. I hate that the chair leans. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, we take a podcast approach to these episodes. Yes. So we're talking about Pharrell's collection. Why? Because Pharrell, Pharrell's in the news because he's like a Louis Vuitton creative director now. I don't know yes. why that is the case. Yes, I, yes, I will talk yes. about that as well. Yeah. But the most important watch subject today uh, will be really how like Pharrell has a phenomenal taste in watches. Yeah. And it's not just taste, like really forward thinking. Pharrell is one of the few people in the watch industry that I can truly say like, maybe not across the board, but at least on one issue was way ahead of the hype way, way, way miles ahead of the hype. So that's interesting, which makes sense. I mean, if you're really a creative visionary, you should be ahead of the hype, I guess. Uh, and that's, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'm just making up now. What are you wearing? Uh, I don't know, Tartan? <laughs> Glenn Platt. Uh, no, I'm wearing I'm wearing the Elvis uh, Accutron uh, watch. We're literally we literally have Elvis's watch right here. In the presence of, I, I feel weird even wearing it for a minute. I'm like, yeah, uh. yeah, I don't because I fancy myself kind of very much king. Well, yeah, you relate. <laughs> I know. I see it as more of like the first time a watch has felt right. Uh, befitting. Ooh, uh, anyway, we talked all about this watch and, and Elvis's, literally Elvis's watch and his watch collection uh, on the last episode with Bulova. Yes. Um, so you can go ahead and watch that after you watch this. But I'm wearing the reissue. I do feel a little bit more comfortable with it as a leather strap, so if I hit it, I'm not mad about it. Yes. Whereas I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit Elvis's watch. I am wearing a vintage, okay, so I can't take the tag off, but 1969 Bulova Sea King wrist alarm. Oh, nuts. That's so cool. I said this in the last video too. I love the Sea King. Because it's a great watch, obviously, but also because there's a whale on it. Nuts. I just think that's a great, it'll put something weird on your watches, and I'll wear them, guaranteed. 100%. I think it's super cool. To all micro brands. Put a weird animal on. Beautiful watch. You ought to get one of those. I, I also love wrist alarms. Phenomenal fan of wrist you alarms. You know, the, the running joke with Taylor and I, I, I always told her, I was like, I want to get a chronograph. I have the Zenith. I'm like, because like, we have this time where she loves to cook, so I sit in the kitchen, always on some weird stool, and we just chat. And I was always telling her that I was like, you know, I want to start the chronograph, and like we chat. And I tell you, like, oh, five minutes is up, but I always forget the chronograph yeah, is running. Hundred percent. So I always, she's like, how much time has gone by? I, mean, I needed five minutes. And I'm like, oh, 15. Totally forget. Yeah. Wrist alarm. Wrist alarm. That's what I was thinking recently. You are so correct. It's unbelievable. Thank you. That is al dente pasta. You have, you know what I mean? Like that's a beautiful thought. Bzz, bzz, oh, my God! No, I have to take it. Out of the water, but I must forget to preserve at least one cup of the starchy water for the taste. And that's the Bulova wrist alarm. This video is brought to you by headphones.com. Specifically, we're looking at the Focal Batiste, yep. which are amazing headphones, and they kind of are the epitome of a you and me product. 100%. I, even, even my dad bring him into the equation. Right. Uh, I, I let him borrow my Focals uh, from headphones.com just last week when he went on a business trip. I, I just I knew it would blow his mind. I knew yeah, well, but that's a huge audio file. Uh, you know, listen, watch people and audio people and car people for that matter. And right? camera There's people. incredible synergy there because it's, it's rooted in people who understand quality and will sacrifice in other places of their life if they have to to experience the quality of um, yes. of a fine watch, of, of the sound of that movement, of of true like experience. Because that's what that's what these headphones are. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. not you know just music. You know. It's Exactly. Experience. I mean, that's the the big thing is that it goes two ways, right? Like you listen to it on the airplane, or you listen to it at home. You're chilling, and then I'll do the same thing. But when I'm editing, I will use the USB-C plug and use the DAC that is in the headphones, so I can hear everything that I need to. There is two levels of noise cancellation. There's transparency mode. There is everything that you possibly need in 
which is very important in the watch community, a premium aluminum package. The actual drivers are made in France. Focal has some of the best audio equipment in the entire world. It's not just the music. For me, it's the music when I want to when I want to break yeah, from work. For sure. But when I'm working, I just want, you know, noise canceling, maybe something classical, just really just, you know, in the background and it's like I'm in my own little world. I mean, if I had like horse blinders on, I really would be in my You'd own world. That, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So anyway, that's my pitch for Focal and for headphones.com. Remarkable one-stop shop for, for audio files. Um, I highly recommend them. So do I. What do I know Pharrell from? Let's start there. Everything. Every piece of music ever that you'd probably liked is by Pharrell. Okay, just say one thing. <laughs> like, like, Happy. What the f Happy. That's it? Well, no, that's not it. It's everything. <laughs> okay, so name another thing. Um, I know Happy. It's some with Kanye, right? For, no, it do I, it was for, did Pharrell do stuff on, uh, on uh, Blueprint 3? Let's see. Happy, beautiful, drop it like it's hot, milkshake, hot in here, rock yeah. your body, holla back girl, holla back blurred girl. lines. Front. Blurred lines. I'm a slave for you, Mr. Me Too, get lucky, feels, got your money. Dude, it just goes. Wow. This guy's got a lot of you know, money, he huh? is. He is stupidly famous. Wow. Like, uh, uh, he's, it makes sense that he's such a trendsetter in watches because he's always been on the charts in music. Wow. And that's his signature thing, the four count start, the... If my dad was here, he'd be like, great, good for him. He knew how to do this. <laughs> my dad, if he has too much to drink, Sam, my best friend, is a yeah. DJ. Wow. And he'll just sit there. And Sam loves classic music. Sam lo my dad hates new music. He's one of those guys. And, and to the point where it's ridiculous because there's plenty of really interesting, powerful new stuff out there. You're my like, dad has taken an old stance. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just the new stuff is bad. It's and weird he's right, that you didn't a lot follow of his shoes at all. <laughs> <laughs> because pop, a lot of pop music is terrible, it right? Like that. it's terrible. You know, you know which is I, why Bradley Cooper kills himself. My opinion is <laughs> In a Star is born. My yeah. opinion is pop music is the natural as you grow up, when you first start hearing music, which is very it sounds very dumb, but when you're like young, ten to I don't know, sixteen. <laughs> You're just like, wow, it's music, and like you, you, you love it. It's amazing, right? And that's when pop music is like at its all time for you. Yeah. And then you get older, and you've you've heard pop music now right. for you know twenty years or whatever, and you're like, this is all the same. But for that crucial stage in your life, that is music. And yes. You're like, that's insanely beautiful. Yes. So tell me about his watch collection, dude. I'd be happy to. Pharrell was one of the artists that was really on the Jacob and Co. ride. Yes. Jay Z was there. Obviously. Yes. It was like. Watches hadn't refined in the in the rap world yet. Yes. Where now, obviously, rappers are. Well, we'll talk about for in a second. But there was a point where it was like huge watches, and what is it? The five time zone watch. The five it? time zone watch. You want to talk about that a little bit? Okay. So, so here's okay. First of all, on to, uh, with Pharrell, I, I will give you a sneak peek into my thoughts. I think it is rem very interesting that in 2003, Pharrell is photographed wearing an AP yellow gold skeleton uh, perpetual, and then two years later, he's wearing a time zone. And I know that his passion for yeah, yeah, I know his passion for uh, AP never stopped. But it's bizarre that these two things could happen at the same time. Right. How he could be both so he could be he could be 15, 18 years ahead of the AP movement, mm -hmm. meaning everyone wanting to get an AP, not to mention a complicated AP, not to mention a skeleton, like yeah. and king of king watch in two thousand three when right. no one even knew that shit existed. AP was still like. And then three years annoying. later, he's wearing uh, a five time zone watch, which is culturally very important, but a complete piece of shit, uh, watch, right? It's well, a, it's I thought a, you love Jacob and Co. Yeah. It's a Jacob and Co. watch uh, that, I mean, I, listen, I don't know too much about the five time zone. I know enough to say that the five time zone watch was a, was a cultural force. Uh, it was a watch that was adopted by, you know, I guess just rappers, just people in, people in pop. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, rappers in in the early 2000s, um, the, the 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 retail prices I believe were in the you know 15 to 20 thousand dollar range, and why I'm saying that is because Jacob, well I'll say that in a second, but 20 thousand dollar range, and and now a lot of these five times on watches, Jacob himself will sell you for you know four grand. So the margins on these watches were remarkable. Really? And wow. the, the reason the margins were remarkable is because Jacob, Jacob understood the power of perceived value. He understood that pave diamonds are 
virtually worthless compared to what they seem to be worth. The, di the value of the diamonds really? is zero compared to the perception of the value. Wow. The five time zone, wow, in time all over the world. It's five individual quartz movements. They're all pieces of shit. It's a garbage watch. Yep. It's garbage. Yeah. And I had a diesel. That, there you go. I think I had three. But it was three crowns and everything. It's it unbelievable. Exact, yeah. and, 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 it, and it made him a, a cultural force, which mm -hmm. I'm sure that he, he was brilliant and in capitalizing on. Yeah, he went from a, 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 a jeweler, basically, in what, Diamond District? Like, in a booth, uh, to being a, you know... To Jacob & Co. Jacob & Co. is a yeah. huge company, right? With, where a single watch is worth several million dollars, or, you know, at least at retail, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's wild, right? It's, it's, it's a wild story. It's culturally relevant at the moment because Hodinkee just wrote an article about the five times on You watch, sent me that, yeah. You which I thought was up. incredibly interesting. Like, super cool article, right? Like, the company, I'm sorry, I know I'm going to rant here. Um, rant, but buddy. but the company that is, like, you know, known for, you know, uh, you know, looking at vintage watches, complicated Pateks, definitely, like, culturally. Definitely not Jacob and Co. You could draw a Hodinkee employee, and people have done it on online. <laughs> Their icon is them drawing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and people have done it online on the meme accounts. They all look the kind of the same, you know. And I love all, uh, of not all of them. Anyone I met it from Hodinkee, oh, no. I love. They're great. <laughs> love Skinny, them. they wear dark rim glasses. They they're all have kind of facial a, hair. A yes, they're yeah, holding yeah. a Leica. They're not very know. excited in their videos, but it's like a sophisticated, like, yes. oh, you know, this is a good watch. Exactly. Yeah. So the five time zone watch is is nothing that any Hodinkee employee would wear. Is no. basically the point, yes. okay? Yes. Uh, uh, so I thought it was really awesome that they did this like really deep dive into the history of this watch and its cultural importance. I thought it was super cool, like unexpected, and they could have made a book out of it. You know, here's on to my next Jacob & Co point. If you go and watch uh, Jacob & Co doing a video with producer Michael, Yeah. This is one of my favorite videos on the watch internet. And I don't watch a lot of watch videos. Yeah. Okay. Have it you seen this? Like a, no, it sounds like a crazy duo of it. Oh, it's awesome. I feel like so producer Michael, So producer Michael drops big money at, at watch. Oh, right. <laughs> so producer Michael goes over to Jacob and Co. Yeah. And I really believe that there wasn't a lot of like plan. Like Jacob, like, like no, I believe. I know there wasn't. I'm not an idiot. No. Okay. J Producer Michael said, I'd like to come shoot a video at your store. You know, we have subscribers, you'll get a bunch of things, and I'm going to buy some watches. Sure. Jacob said, Great, terrific, come by. Come by and see my coat. Come by and see my coat. So he comes in, looks at some shit. Oh, I have that, I have that, I have that, I have that. He was trying to sell him a watch that was in the several hundred thousand dollar range and up. And it was the Bugatti Chiron, I believe, uh, uh, watch. Producer Michael, not interested. Not interested at all. Instead, <laughs> asks Jacob, I swear to God, asks Jacob, do you have anything that I can buy and give away as gifts? And now you can start to see Jacob start to, one, like be like, this is a fucking waste of my time, sure. A. Sure. And B, the real feelings of embarrassment come. Because I'm showing you what the company is now, what we are today, uh. and you're bringing out my high school yearbook. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. they bring out boxes of literal piece of shit five time zone watches. Really? Piece of shit watches. And, and producer Michael not only buys like 10 or 20, but continues to ask for discounts, I believe up to 50% off. And then asks Jacob, will you honor the 50% for all my people? And they had, dude, it's the most cringy. And Jacob is sitting there like, this. yeah, we could, yeah. We could do that. I think we could do that. We, yeah, we could. And he can't wait for the meeting to be over. Can't wait. It was brutal. Wow. Brutal. I love that. It just, it's like two people talking to each other and not hearing the other person. It, it, Jacob really should have just said, listen, man, like we have to cut the video. Cut well, I, this is not something that we sell anymore. You're stealing like, the brand. You're killing yeah, yeah, yeah. me, you know? And, 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 and Jacob knows that. I mean, those watches, they're for somebody. But they're, they're not for his current clients. They have yeah, course, no similarity with his, with his current collection. No. The current no. collection is, if you want the most expensive watch, you go Jacob McCarthy. Yes. Yeah. And again, I love the five time zone, like for what it stood for at the of time. Course, yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, I remember Kanye, right? Like, I went to Jacob with 25,000 before I had a house and I would do it again. Yeah. Like, yeah. that was cool. It meant something, you know? But now it's kind of a. Now it's a different brand. Yeah. Now it's a brand you go spend 20 to. Two million at. It's also it's also the biggest. It's like seeing the price of things now. You're like, wow, that didn't like if it didn't it didn't sustain that price. No. You're like, oh, they, it changes how you view the brand. Oh, like, completely. When you're buying a sixteen thousand dollar watch for three grand, 
You know, it's it, it was it was rough. You have to go watch it. It was really really brutal. I can't wait to watch that video. Oh, uh, it was absolutely brutal. <laughs> the the royal and this is a very dumb statement. It looks so cool on Pharrell because he's wearing it so casually. Yes, that it's it's nothing new. It's an iconic watch, but seeing it on a guy just like in a t-shirt yes. outside in the summer, yes. I'm like, that's cool. That's I don't cool. want to see it under a suit cuff anymore. No, I want to see it like that. That's so cool. He has phenomenal taste. Yeah. But then later on, did he keep his AP fascination? Oh, there you go. Yeah, There's a white metal AP. What year is that? Uh, 2002. Oh my God. Wild. Wild how invested he Even was in this brand Even a rare platinum version, which is, only, which is one of only 34 examples that AP produced. Not that he cared about the money, but God, what he probably owns those watches at. <laughs> Pennies. <laughs> Nothing. Pennies on the dollar. Nothing. And you know what? The craziest part is that he doesn't care. Like he said. Doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. He yeah. probably can't even find one. Yeah. yeah. Why, why he doesn't know where it <laughs> I is. I gave one to Mike Tyson on the, a podcast. The white one. You think one. he still has it? The white one? The white one? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. Dream watch. Dream watch. I don't know. I have no idea. 100%. And then... And and then he kind of goes the full level, which John Mayer does the same thing. Yep. You're rocking concept watches from AP. Yes. Which typically, honestly, I'm not a fan of. I feel like they're, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't have the access to watches that John Mayer and Pharrell Williams have. Yes. So I don't think I'm a fan of them. Yes. But in terms of this watch space, I'm a baby. I haven't yes. interacted with a lot of these watches. but. I'm assuming once you've had a not, not, Neither have I. I mean, well, yeah. that's crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted to... Uh, my silence made it almost uh, uh, made it seem as if I had. You're, you're I've like, never held yeah, an AP I concept. I don't think... I, I understand, like, it has to be... If you're rocking a Royal Oak since 2002, you're like, what else you guys got? What, yeah. What, what, what can you do for me? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. But from right now, with my eyes and yours too, it's just like... That looks like a weird watch. How deep was he into... Uh, what, what year was this? 2014. 2014 wearing AP Concepts. I mean, at this point, like with what we're seeing here, Pharrell is one of the greatest watch collectors in pop culture. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, that is for sure. If he ever was like, I'll go into talking watches, ah, it would be unbelievable. Insane. John Mayer would be his son. Yes. Literally. Yes. No offense to John Mayer. No offense to John Mayer. Oh, and this is, this is a fun one. Gem Set Casio G-Shock collaboration cool. with BAPE, the DW6900. Jacob & Co. I actually don't know what Bape is. What is Bape? Bape is like a, it's like a hype streetwear brand. Or yeah, yeah, I knew was. that. Yeah, I, I knew yeah. that. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I just didn't know like anything. It, it, to me, Bape is interchangeable with Kith. I don't know the difference. Oh yeah, okay. Well, there's it's different style, different brands. Okay. But it, Bape is Bape. Bape, I don't see a ton anymore. But you remember those? Everybody at one point was where I don't know where you were, but everybody was wearing those hoods with the zipper that goes all the way to the top yes. with the animals. Yes. Bape. Bape. Babe. Interesting. But he's wearing a gem set Casio. I think that's hysterical. Right. Yeah, that gem is awesome. That's super cool. Wow. That's next level. That is nuts. What year was that? But that was also a big thing. The Casios, the G-Shocks. Again, back to Kanye. I mean, these guys were really forming the culture of, you know, watches and style at the time. It was kind of like, is he wearing a cardigan there? Yeah, yeah. it was kind of like preppy. It was like prep, Kanye's but street. Kanye's in pink in a backpack. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. very bizarre. Was, what what a weird time. It, this is also the epitome of the watch culture now is because of these guys. Oh, completely. These guys wearing these watches and going so ostentatious. Yep. Now the modern watch world, and there's still a lot of, you know, totally ice out APs going around, but that shift to being like, no, I, you wear this watch, there's a song ASAP for Plain Jane, which is literally like, don't put diamonds on your watch, yep. keep the value, that's yep. why it's cool, yep. is because of Pharrell and Kanye and yep. everybody doing that. Yep. And then we get into RM, which RM I feel like is really, that's where you go eventually for these guys because yeah. RM will work directly with you and make a crazy watch. What's interesting, and I don't really know a lot about RM, I haven't, I've only ever held you know, a small handful, like th three or five RMs, you know, yeah. which yeah. obviously is a lot, but it's, it's, you know, it's, there's so many out there. Uh, I'm the last thing from RM expert. Um, but you know, there's a debate, and I don't have a position in this debate because mm -hmm. I don't know enough about it, but there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a big debate in the watch community whether or not RM will be a total flash in the pan brand. Whether really? or not RM will will be at all relevant in 15 years. Wow. And that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to the question. Part of me believes that it will. It, it is, in fact, a flash in the pan brand. Because when I look at staying power, I don't look at the brand nearly as much as I look at the buyers. Sure. People... Are, are the people that are buying something, are they the sort of people that can pay attention mm. and get deep? 
or the sort of people that are always looking everywhere and there's always a next new thing, next new thing, next new thing. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. See, I was going to say, like, I feel like the, everybody, and everybody, these celebrities get to the RM level because all of a sudden it's nothing you've ever seen very frequently. Yeah. Like, I'm looking mean, at this is the smiley one, there's a samurai one, you know, there's all these insane RMs. Yeah. Where it gets to the point where if you are a watch collector or you're that high up, like, that starts to entertain you more than a concept AP. You're like, okay, it's cool, but this one's wild. This one is a flash in the pan, but yeah. I'm at that level where if it's it doesn't a flash matter, in the pan, right. I lose it. It doesn't matter. It's right. cool. I give it away. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. I mean, but, but how, you know, how crazy can you go before people stop caring? I mean, look at Madonna, right? Madonna is, what, a, a Queen of pop. I mean, no, one of the most really. iconic pop stars of all time. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, look how far she's had to go between the fake British accent, the nonsense, the she ridiculous did a fake stuff. British accent. Oh, for years. <laughs> uh, the the nonsense. Now she's totally off the deep end. For what for what reason other than to attempt to keep yeah, an audience you that you believe you've would leave you otherwise. Right. How many, how many custom, you know, how much ridiculousness can RM do? You think Bef RM is a plastic surgery of the watch world? I think that, I think that that is very possible. I don't know wow. if that's true. I think wow. it's very possible. I, yeah, I honestly have no idea either. I think RM looks cool. I've never even seen one in real life. I do think they look cool, you know, I do. I've just never seen one in real life. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's the same thing where sometimes you see a watch that you love on the internet and then you're like, oh, this sucks. I also wonder, like, the RM base, if they will be bothered or not now that the, that the value of their watches has collapsed. Because yeah. RM took a 30% you know, dive post-COVID, 30, 40. Really? You're also talking about 30%, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, of course. You know, a $400,000 watch took a 40% dive or a 30% wow. dive. I clearly yeah. call RM at all. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. So wow. I wonder what that will do to the allure of the brand because the brand is clearly built on the brand is the brand not because of mechanics, not because of design. The brand is the brand because there's one photo that really embodies it, and I'll send it to you at some point if I can find it. But it's because it is the biggest, uh, you know, I know exactly that's what it is. Yeah, of course. Because it is the most, your Nautilus is nothing compared to my watch. Mine is expensive, incredibly custom. You can't get it. Yes. It's beautiful. And it's, it's sporty and I'm cool yeah. and that's it. Anyway, so uh, the last thing that went on very quickly, that uh, this article that we're reading ends with, so what's next? Where do you think, what would you even suggest to Pharrell? I feel like I would just ask yeah. him for advice. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, What's next for a guy like that? I mean, he'll, I think he'll come down from the RM stuff. I was gonna say, I think he's going like this and it, all of a sudden it becomes like, I, I wear yeah, a dress I mean, watch. Yeah, I could see the guy ending up in, you know, the world of Jorn and, and you know, uh, small production, crazy yeah. shit. Like, you know, like the, again, if the guy knew that, that Super complicated APs were the watch to own and own multiples of in 2002. When, what happens now? The guy sees the future. What happens now? The guy sees find, the future. You want to find watches, I feel like, at that point that you're just like, listen, I don't even care if it's photographed. Like, it just has to be different. Yes. It has to be something cool. Yes. I don't need this ostentatious thing anymore. Like, I want to see something super thin. That's yeah. beautiful. I want to see a deadbeat second. Yeah, like it gets to that. Oh yeah, that's what I think. That's the future. I mean, he probably has everything already. He probably is. Also well, I don't know. I mean, that. maybe, maybe, maybe. He just gets a tattoo every minute of the time. An RM hours. doesn't tell me that he's already had everything. Being in an RM phase doesn't tell me you've mm. already had everything. Being in an RM phase seems like a very predictable trendy. point in your collecting career, and there is a great future ahead. Wow. That's I, actually, I doubt he'll true. be wearing RM at the helm of Louis that's Vuitton. Who stops at RM? Nobody. Hmm. You know. The only, the only people that stop at RM are the guys that are ODing at the club wearing RM. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> oh it's the truth. God. What it's a marketing, like uh, different watch brands. Like, how can we take down RM? Yeah. You're like, here's, here's the idea. Here's the idea. <laughs> Addiction. Uh, anyway, so that's the story. That's Pharrell. That's, that's Pharrell. That's Pharrell. That's Bulova. I would suggest him to get a, the Sea King. Yeah, I love the Sea King. Uh, this is the watch that I really wanted to pull out today, which was the uh, the Devil Diver in orange. This is just crazy. one of the coolest. This is the original, yep. and then this is the this is the modern one, and I adore it. Oh, this is I'm sorry. This is the sn the Snorkel Devil. Yes, yeah, yeah, the Snorkel Snorkel Devil. Yep, super cool. 
I love it. The bracelet's amazing. The dial's colorful. Um, you know, back to what do you do next? I think that color is next for most people. A lot of guys are just like afraid to get involved in color, and I think that I think that it's so what's up right now. It's it's so what's up. <laughs> it's not ish. Don't think so at all. No. Yeah. So anyway, that's a story. I'm getting a chair like this. That's for sure. Me too. My opinions are stronger in a chair like this. They are. Yeah. A lot more body to it. A lot more body to me. No, to the opinions. Yeah.